or something of the Making Stories podcast. Oh God, this seems to be a recurring theme that I forget to look up the episode numbers. Um, nevertheless, I am so glad that you're joining me today. Um, welcome, my name is Annalisa, I'm the host for this podcast. And um, I am so excited to be back here in this space. I haven't recorded in a little while and that's because the majority um, of you said when I asked a couple of episodes ago whether you would mind me recording not on a super consistent schedule but every time that you know there was enough to talk about uh, you said yes. Um, there were a few people who prefer a more consistent schedule uh, but I think for now um, it works a little better for me to record whenever I actually have something to share. Um, whether that's, you know, lots of knitting that's been happening or new things coming into the shop or ideally both, which is my preferred type of podcast episode. Um, so that's how we're rolling for the next few months and we'll see how I feel and how you feel about this and also how the viewing statistics are because I do think that YouTube probably rewards if you post uh, new videos consistently um, but also I have to balance YouTube's desire for regular new content uh, with my own ability to record and actually make good videos. I think that the camera probably switched off just now because um, I, hadn't, I hadn't actually turned on the power plug that the camera is plugged into. So, um, so we'll see, hopefully that won't, that won't happen again. Because um, I really don't like episodes that are super choppy. I like to record in, in one setting. I think it makes for a better flow of the episode. Anyways, um, yeah, I do feel a little bit rusty and also I feel quite cold, which is why I have like double layers of, um, of woolies here. Um, I, it's, it's gotten really cold here in Berlin. It actually has been snowing for the past week and a half or so. The day that I'm recording this is December 6th, so by the time that you'll be watching this, we won't have snow anymore because for next week, which is when this episode comes out, um, the weather forecast is like 10 degrees centigrade, which is way too warm for this time of the year. But we've been really, really, really enjoying the snow. I love this time of the year. Um, I'm not religious, um, so <laughs> and, and neither is, is my husband. So we're still trying to find our feet around like how to celebrate and what to celebrate. But I love uh, all the twinkling lights and I love going to Christmas markets and baking cookies and all of those things that come with this season. So um, yeah, we've, we've been doing a little bit of that. Yesterday evening we went to a Christmas market for the first time this season, which was really, really lovely. I was a new one to us, actually a new one this year. Alrighty, we'll try this again. I don't actually really know what's happening with the camera. Um, I just Googled it and yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Apparently there were some issues with some lenses and connectivity, so I'm hoping that that's not that because that's the only lens that I packed. So that would be unfortunate. Alrighty, let's get into it. I have a tiny bit of knitting to show you today and then I have something that I um, don't, often do, which is kind of an acquisition slash gift thing that I got because I'm really excited about it. And then the last portion of this podcast will be about what's coming to the shop on December 11th, which is when we'll have the last shop update of the year. It's going to be our winter celebration shop, shop update. So there's lots of little goodies and the yarn that we had in our winter celebration box. So if you didn't get one of those, um, you have the chance of getting um, most of the goodies that we had there individually and then we also have a restock of a really exciting yarn um, And then I just want to chat a little bit at the end about what's coming in the new year Knitting wise, I have actually done quite a lot of knitting in the last few weeks since we last spoke But I only have one project to show you because the rest have been gifted already um, the first one I don't think I'm even going to insert a picture here over here because it was a baby gift net for a dear friend of mine who watches the podcast and I'm not entirely sure if it's arrived yet uh, but it was a really really fun uh, knit um, 
uh, two nets actually, a little pair of, of something and then another something something in a really fun yard and I, and I very much enjoyed that. And it was really fun to see and remember how uh, newborn baby nets, how quickly they knit up. The second, um, the second knit that I did um, was for a dear neighbor of ours who's in his 70s and he um, asked me uh, if I could make him a winter hat and I said yes I, I can of course what would you like and then he gave me one of his summer hats um, to measure and I decided on a simple ribbed beanie a free pattern by Pearl Soho it's called the classic ribbed head I think hat I think um, and I knit it in um, Dero Naturas Yulis in the Fusan colorway, which is a lovely dark gray, a little bit heathered. Um, and it's a really straightforward hat. It's um, one by one ribbing, and then you do decreases like six, basically in, in, in sort of like a spiral form. So it fits really, really nicely. Um, and that was a surprisingly quick knit for it being ribbing all the way through. And I tried it on myself. It fits really well and I'm hoping that it will keep him warm. So I'm going to insert a little picture of that here. Um, and that's that's been gifted as well. The one thing that I have on the needles, well, I have a few things, but all of them are on, uh, on hiatus right now as I'm working through this, um, is another gift that uh, so I have three nephews, um, two of them are, are my sister's kids and when I visited them in the summer and they saw me knitting and um, my bigger nephew asked me if I could uh, knit him a sweater and I was like of course I can. Um, fast forward a few, a few months later and they visited us last weekend so I took measurements of both him and his little brother because I can't make one for him and then not one for his little brother, right? Uh, and I'd already picked out yarn and I knew which pattern I wanted to make. So that's what I have on my needles, the one for my for my biggest nephew. Um, and it is this. It's a little bit wrinkly. Um, this is the sibling sweater by Laura Penrose. It's a really lovely striped sweater. Um, her samples are a little less bright than this one. I think she always uses like a neutral, uh, lighter color and then a darker color. Um, these are the two favorite colors of my nephew, pink and teal. And so it's of course becoming a pink and teal sweater. Um, the sweater is constructed from the top down. It has really cool construction. You first start with the back um, and then you work these really neat looking increases. Um, and then you pick up for the fronts, work the fronts separately and then connect them and then work your way down to the armhole. And then it's soothing stockinette and stripes in the round. And I'm about halfway through the hem. There are two different hem options, a classic hem and a split hem, and I'm just doing the classic one. I am knitting the size three to four years, or four to five years, I can't remember, um, uh, which fit him really well. I made the body a little longer. So Laura has you um, sort of adjust the body if you wanna add a bit of length in increments of stripes of two so that you always end on a contrasting um, stripe. And yeah, so it's a little bit longer, um, which I don't think is bad for a kid's sweater. It's gonna be a drop shoulder sweater. So when I'm done with the hem, I'm gonna be picking up stitches around the armholes and then work the sleeves in the same stripe pattern. And then the last thing to do is uh, pick up the stitches for the neck band and then work the neck band. I'm really enjoying this. This is a really, really fast knit and also really fun with the stripes. Um, there is a version for adults and I'm very seriously contemplating casting on for myself uh, after all of my Christmas knitting has been done. 
Um, the yarn that I'm using for this is the Rare Naturas Gilead, which is, they, they sort of say is their worsted weight. It works very much as a decay weight gauge that Laura states in her pattern if I work it on four millimeter needles, so that's what I'm doing. It's a really nice sturdy yarn, but also soft enough for kids. Um, and it's, it's really warm and it comes in a great range of colors. So, so yeah, plus quite budget friendly. So I'm, I'm estimating that I'll need two balls of the main color, which is the pink and one of the contrasting color, the teal for this one. So yeah, for the smaller size for my younger nephew, I'll probably only need one and one. Um, we'll see, I'll report back how that goes. But this is the sibling sweater by Laura Penrose in the room Natura Gilliette. Um, oh, colorways, pink is um, Bois de Rose and the teal is Supre. Maybe by the time that you're watching this, we'll already have received our restock of Gilead because we're out of quite a few colors. So I just placed a reorder the other day that's on its way to fr from France to us. So yeah, hopefully that'll arrive really soon. Ooh, I realized that I actually didn't tell you what I'm wearing, which I know you'll probably want to know. Um, so this is my Lueur Shawl. This is a pattern from our issue eight by Audrey Borrego. I knit this last year in Hudson and West's Weld yarn, which we don't carry anymore. Um, it was one of my favorite knits of last year because it has different textured sections. So it goes by really quickly and it's super wearable and really, really lovely, warm and lightweight at the same time. So any sport weight yarn will do for this. Um, and this sweater is my trusted citrine sweater from Jules. So way back when knit in Derivum Natura Julis to the worsted weight gauge that the pattern states. So it's really lovely, lightweight and drapey. And I adore it. It's my, one of my most worn knits. Alrighty, on to the promised acquisition section. So, um, if you've been following us for a while, you know that our lovely tech editor, Jessica, um, started a woolen processing mill um, last year. I think last year, yeah. Um, that's called Skagit Woolen Works. Uh, so they do roving and lots of really nice sort of wool, woolly additions like dryer balls and wool pellets. And they also work with Abundant Earth Fiber. That's another mill, a full yarn making mill, if you will, um, that's in their area on producing some really beautiful limited edition yarns. I um, have been wanting to get something from them for the longest while. And I finally got my hands on some beautiful yarn because they made a dyed in the wool yarn. So like fle the fleeces were dyed and then blended yarn that's absolutely adorable um and when i um placed my order i threw in another skein of something that i've been wanting to try and then when jess sent me my parcel i was like this is a little bit bigger than i anticipated and she was so sweet she threw in uh one of their wool pillows which is something that i've been eyeing for like ever since they launched them and then also two other goodies. So the woolen pillow that's at home on my bed, so I didn't bring that, but, but two other goodies I've brought. Um, they currently don't have a ship to Germany. I don't know if it's a ship to Europe thing on their website, but I'm very sure if you, if you email them, they'd be more than happy to work with you on figuring something out. If you are based in the US, they do ship to the US and I highly recommend them. So what I got, um, and this is, this is purchase, is um, the mitts and hat kit uh, in their newest yarn, Thistledown. Um, and I got three colors that just screamed my name. So this is, an, this is like, this is a very light gray. And then I got this really beautiful lilac -y violet purple with hints of gold and blue and this deep dark it reminds me of um what is that in english in german it's brombeeren bramble no not brambleberries 
I don't actually know. You know these like deep purple, almost black berries. So it's a purple with flecks. Again, flecks of gold and pink and blue. And these three are gonna be phenomenal together. I am thinking that I wanna knit a hot water bottle cozy with these. Um, definitely something kind of work. So we'll see, I'll report back. Um, oh, and I wanted to say, so the thistle down is a 100%, oh God, I'm gonna butcher that, Puget Sound Shetland wool, um, hand selected and processed in the Skagit Valley, spun by abandoned earth fiber on Whidbey Island. So the first part, the selection and the processing, that's done by Skagit Woolen Works, and then the spinning is done by abundant earth fiber. Um, this is a fingering weight, and this would be, if you want to make mittens and a hat, this would be more than enough for that. I also got a skein of their Island Time yarn, which is an undyed sport weight three-ply yarn. That's just, it's heavenly. So I want to make myself a hat with this, a cabled hat. Um, and it just, but I just also want to squish it, because it's like, really, it's my type of yarn. It's really lovely, soft, not too soft though, has great handle. Um, and this is 100% Romney lamb's wool, so no wonder that it's as soft, because lamb's wool is the softest wool that you can get. Um, so this has been grown on Locust Island by um, some friends of Jessica's, and then also processed by Skagit Woolen Works, and again, uh, spun by Abundant Earth Fiber on, on Whitby Island. So. I'm very excited to have these. And then Jess uh, threw in this really beautiful um, lavender sachet. It's a really super, super generous size. I mean, I love everything lavender, right? Like I'm a knitter who doesn't, well, maybe some of you don't actually. That was like a stupid assumption on my side. Maybe you actually don't like the scent of lavender. I do like it. Um, so this has some wool stuffing um, and lavender um, from Eastern Washington. And then um, it's, they, they sew that themselves. So Jessica and her partner, business partner, Anna, um, and they do that using some scraps from uh, American wool blankets that they, I think, also carry. So zero waste, perfect for, you know, keeping your woolen smelling I can't stop smelling it because it's not so good <laughs> keeping like it really it is really really lovely and it will help keep your woolies smell nice the last thing that I want to show you from the lovely parcel that I got is something that will also help your woolies smell nice this is a wool mist that they also make and I do have plans of asking Jessica maybe we can carry this because I think this is really genius so um this is um this is a mist um I think it's probably distilled water I'm not entirely sure and then essential oils it contains rosemary lavender and cedar essential oils and you can spray that on your woolies to um keep them fresh and have like this lovely you know, lavender scent as well. Um, and it will also help keep moths away because cedar and lavender are great natural moth repellents. Um, another thing that you can do with this, which I absolutely love, is you can actually spray it on your pillow. It will help rest you easier, like rosemary and lavender help you do that. Um, and the wool pillow that I got, that, been, that had been sprayed with this and, and it's just really, it's just really, really lovely. Um, so, yeah. Um, thank you so much, Jess, for sending these goodies along with my order. I really, really, really appreciate it. So, Skate It Woolen Works, I'll pop the link into the down bar below. Let's get on to shop news. So, as I said, we're going to have our last shop update of the year on December 11th, which is going to be the day after our winter celebration closes. And that's also the day that this podcast episode will go live because I don't want you to see any of the goodies that I'm about to show you before you've opened your winter celebration box if you've got any. Um, so that's why the shop update is directly after the winter celebration has finished um, 
and uh, yeah what I'm gonna start with though um now let's start with the winter celebration goodies so we'll have some like really 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 limited quantities of the really special yarn that was in the winter celebration box which has been custom dyed by Beth of Telling Yarns for us so Telling Yarns is a fabulous UK based yarn company Beth hand dyes her yarns on their family farm she has two custom spun bases they're spun by John Arvin textiles also in the UK all of the fleeces are sourced within the UK and then as I said spun by John Arvin hand dyed by Beth so this is a 100% British yarn um, it's the same makeup for both yarns but there are different weights so we have a fingering weight and a decay weight. Um, the fingering, so the yarn is 50% Blue Face Lester, 30% Romney, 15% Mesham, and 5% Swarpless. Um, and I find it really interesting because they have a little bit of a different handle. So this one feels a bit drapier and bouncier. This is the fingering. Whereas this one here, uh, the stack fast decay, which is the decay weight, uh, feels a lot crisper with crisper stitch definition. Um, I love them. And Beth came up with this fabulous cutaway for us. So this is an olive green with hints of gold and burgundy. It's called Sunfire, exclusively dyed just for us. And it's the one that I used for my near end forehead, which if you were part of the winter celebration, you'll have gotten the pattern as um, as a thank you gift. Um, so, you know, if you like the pattern, this is the yarn that I used for the sample. So um, if you want to make the same hat, you just need one skein. We'll have, I think like four or five of the decay weight and maybe six or seven of the fingering weight. So really, really limited quantities. So if you want them, I would recommend moving fast. Then we also have some lovely, lovely notions. I'm just gonna get my little, my little um, piece here. So we'll have some really lovely notions that were part of the winter celebration box that we haven't had before. So we'll have a square gauge ruler by Nordlich Designs. This is um, made from Austrian maple wood in Austria. Um, and I really like it. It's not gonna, oh, there we go, that's better. So this is great, like if you need a swatch and you wanna measure it, um, you can just put this on top and then it has rulers on both sides to measure, sti to measure stitch and row gauge. Um, it's, uh, it's metric measurements, so this is in centimeters. We'll also have these cute little Bergen leather pouches by Mood. So they open with, um, a button and then inside there's a pocket well it's like one pocket so and they're the perfect size for um, stitch markers or a little pair of scissors which we also have now first time that we have scissors in the shop excuse the pack packaging these are the ones that I picked for myself <laughs> that I also use for the photo shoot so we got some UK made scissors from Merchant and Mills. These are the fine work gold scissors. So they look like this. They're eight centimeters long. The blade is three centimeters, um, which I think is the perfect size. And they have a sharp tip. Um, so so it's, my, it's my kind of my kind of scissors. And they're matte gold. Snip, snip and they fit perfectly into the little pouch. There we go. Um, and then in terms of notions, I also obviously couldn't resist. I had to get some winter themed needle stoppers. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five new designs. So we will have these cute, oops, I don't think that's gonna work. We'll have these cute missile, I don't know what, what that actually is. Um, 
I don't think it's mistletoe. Uh, anyways, these cute little berry leaves will have very few gingerbread people. We'll have these cute trees. Snow people and snowflakes. These come in pairs of twos, and um, I really, really love them. Alrighty, we also have a new category that we're launching as of this shop update to the shop, which is called Tasty Treats and it will include the hot chocolate that we launched in the last shop update and then a few new goodies that I'm really excited about. The tastiest of which is this. So I love popcorn and there is a Berlin-based popcorn manufacturer that makes the best popcorn in the world. They're called Knalle Popcorn and will be carrying two different flavors, butter caramel Tahiti vanilla and dark chocolate roasted elements, which is actually vegan, this one. So if you're a vegan, this, you know, might be just right up your alley. Um, and this is, this is not vegan. Both are extremely delicious, just saying. As we launched the hot chocolate last time, um, we're adding some mugs this time. So these are the Grespresso cups by Costa Nova. They're stoneware handmade in Portugal and they come with this really lovely wintry glaze. And they're really big. So they fit like up to 300 milliliters, which is what, like 10 ounces or something. So like a large coffee. So yeah, really like them. And for those of you who, like me, love baking Christmas cookies or holiday cookies, we'll also have a few of these sweater cookie cutters by Studio C Click. Last but not least, for all your stationary needs, we now carry these beautiful postcards by Natalia Scatula or Nataskalia. She's a Marburg-based, so German, Germany-based um, watercolor illustrator, and I think she makes the most beautiful postcards. These are printed on 100% recycled paper. The back is blank, so if you want to send a love note to a knitting friend, perfect timing. Alrighty. Um, the last thing that's going to be in the shop update is the restock of a yarn that we've been waiting for for over a year. It's a fabulous all-natural sock yarn, Garthenor Organics Snow Donia Sock. So this is a 100% organic British sock yarn, um, a Romney Hebridea blend, and... I am so excited that this is back because I know so many of you love it. Um, it's fabulous. We have quite a few patterns for it. Um, it's really warm and sturdy and um, has a really nice handle as well. So very, very happy that we have that back in the shop. We have 14 shades in total, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to start with the two undyed ones. So we're going to have a medium gray, which is this one, which is Toman, and then a dark gray, which is Tidget or Tigit. Um, and this one is the one that they used to dye on. <clears throat> so the, this charge that, we're, that we've gotten now um, is a little bit different in terms of the colorways than the ones that we had before. Even though some of the names are the same, they've been dyed on a different base. So they've been dyed on this base, um, which means they are really lovely and dark and jewel toned. Um, if you have some yarn left over from previous batches of Snowdonia, the colorway might sound the same, but it will be different. So if you, you know, want to mix and match, that will be fine. But if you're looking for something to perfectly match what you have, 
this won't be it. There is nothing left of the previous Snowdonia batch anywhere in the world, I don't think. So, um, so yeah, maybe then some color work or something. Um, alrighty. I am going to continue with the dyed shades, starting with the oranges and reds. Hello, camera. Um, so these are the two dyed shades in, in oranges and reds. This is sundew. This will be something that, um, you know, we've had this colorway before, but it was a bit, this is more burnt orange. Previously, it was a bit brighter. And this is burn it, which is really exciting. It's this really beautiful, deep red. I love this colorway. Moving on to the greens, we have two new greens. So we have khaki on the left and Rowan on the right. So khaki is a more yellowish green and Rowan is a really true forest green. We also have two gorgeous, gorgeous purple shades, which we, which we never had before. These are really, these are incredibly difficult to photograph and also apparently on camera. So this is Fig, the lighter one, a really lovely medium purple. And this is Plum, which is this really, it shows up black on the camera, it's not black. It's this really dark purple. Let's see if together you can kind of, it's really hard. There, there we go, a little bit better. Um, there maybe, yeah. Yeah, these are, these are fabulous. And then we also have two stunning blue shades. So this is Ogwen, which we had before, but again, this is darker. So this is more a tealy blue. And then Bugle, which is a really true dark, dark blue. All of these light shades have been marled together. So we have four marls. Ember, which is sundew and burn it together. Darwin, which is khaki and rowan together. I really love this one, I think. Well, I love all of the models. They were great. Um, Aaron, which is fig and plum together. This is the most subtle of the models. Um, so you can see that those two colorways are quite close together. And then Minai, which is Ogwen and Rowan together. So this is a really lovely blue marl. And I'm so happy about this. Like it's a great color selection. I think it fits this time of the year perfectly, you know, where like I'm just really drawn to the really saturated jewel tones and the really lovely deep glowing colors. And that's, that's definitely what these are. Um, so yeah, we have five of each colorway and there are 50 grams. So I could probably knit a pair of socks for myself. I'm a European size 39 out of one. If you want to be sure, get two. Um, so, so yeah, very, very excited that this is back in stock. Okay. So all of this, what I've just shown you is going to come to the shop uh, or like be in the shop as, as you're watching this uh, or, or today, basically. Um, so this episode will go live on the same day as the shop update. Um, I promise you I will end with a short outlook on next year. So we'll be around, um, you know, until, um, sorry, there's an ambulance coming by. No, a police car actually. Um, so <clears throat> um, contrary to, to uh, previous years, we won't be shutting down the office completely over the holidays. 
So Isabel will keep checking in emails because we realized the last few years that, I mean, there's for most of us a lot of time on our hands after the holidays and before the new year starts. And we went in it and um, sometimes there are like pattern questions that we have and then it's really annoying if you have to wait. So we're trying this out this year the first time, not shutting down the office completely, but Isabel will be checking in periodically in our emails. So that's the best way to reach us. I'll be taking a few days off over the holidays um, to travel a little bit with my family and just spend some time. Um, but I will be doing uh, post office runs periodically as well, so the shop will stay open. We are starting the new year with our long-awaited next sock shop update. That's happening on January 8th and we'll start at 9 a.m. Berlin time for the collective members levels full skein and sweater quantity and the sock knitter email list. So if you love knitting socks and you're not subscribed yet to the sock knitter email list, do so. I'll put the link in the comment in the down bar section below um, because you'll get first tips. And that, um, uh, that particular shop update will see, I'm just looking at the box that's over there, the yarn that we had in our sock boxes in October and the one that we have in our sock boxes in January, plus some goodies. So that's an extra special shop update. Um, when we relaunched our sock subscriptions in October, um, I said that we would do two shop updates every year uh, with overflow products from the sock subscription. So if you are uh, someone who doesn't like to be surprised, which I totally get, um, but you still want to get your yarn on the limited edition custom colorways that we that we have had died up for us for the sock subscriptions, these biannual sock shop updates are where it's at. And we're doing the first one in January, which is really, really exciting. I will be recording a video before then so that you can see all of the things that we'll have in that shop update. I just didn't want to put like two shop updates in one video. I, I felt that was too much. But mark your calendars, January 8th will be the next shop update, the first one of the year. Um, yeah, and do sign up for the Sock Knitter email list if you want to get first tips. Alrighty lovelies, I am going to pack all of this up and then head back home uh, to do some more laptop work and then maybe take a snowy walk outside because it looks really nice. So yeah, I hope you are well and um, that you've enjoyed this year with us. Thank you so much for sticking around, for supporting us. It's been a really, really lovely year for us here at Making Stories. Thank you for making it like that because it's all, it's all you. Um, I love this work and I'm so grateful that I get to do it every single day. I'll see you again here next year. Bye.